Hey what's going on guys, my name is Dallas aka Inferness and welcome back to another episode of The Tech It Realm. Also make sure you guys go ahead and check out my Instagram page, it's the official Instagram page of the channel and yeah I post a lot of really weird things there so yeah I think you should go ahead and follow it. But anyways, today's going to be a short and quick tutorial on how to use XSplit Broadcaster for everyone who wants to record gameplay and their face cam because face cam can be really really hard to figure out. When you're just getting into gaming and you want to post some of your videos up on YouTube and you know what I'm saying. Um, or maybe you just want to be playing some games. This, uh, this, is pretty, this is actually quite helpful for everyone because let's say you want to play some games and you want to make it so that you can see the person's face uh, while you're Skyping with them and play, playing online games with them. I don't know. Maybe you want to take a, a video of it and post it on Twitter. Either way, I'm going to be showing you in a full tutorial on how to use this. So yeah, let's get right into that. So at first, it may seem very, very hard, as you can see right here. Um, there's lots of things, and as you can see, the little audio bar right here is picking up my microphone sound. And um, that's basically, it's muted right now because I don't really use this. I use an external program to record the audio, but this is what it looks like. And the second option for doing this is OBS. Like I said, there's lots of easier ways of recording your face cam, but it does require a lot of money. Um, you need to get like Sony Vegas and stuff. Things that you don't really want because, you know, it's kind of a hassle to pay that much money just to put a face cam in the bottom of your screen. But, this is a very simple way if you don't want to have to pay for that. So, this is what we have here when you first open it up. This is XSplit. Obviously, it's not going to look like this because I have all the things automatically preset for me because I've used it a lot in the past. So, it's going to be all empty. I'm not going to empty all this because I don't want to lose any of this, but... Just pretend this is all empty. You probably know what it looks like because you're looking up a tutorial on how to use it and um, fun stuff like that. So, well, here we are. Now, what you need to do is first add something you want. Like, if you already have a pre-recorded video, go down to the bottom left and click add. If you're going to be recording something, it's going to be a game capture and then it's going to autom automatically choose it. For some reason, it doesn't do that for all games. So, um, if that's the case, just do a screen capture and then just choose what you want like this area right here. Here's my audacity I got going on here so you guys can see behind the scenes. But anyways, um, you could just drag it and drag it up to scale. Um, obviously, you, you're going to want to have your video in 780 or uh, at least 1080p because, you know, that's what you want if you're going to be posting videos to YouTube, to the tubes and stuff. Clearly, this is not what you want. You don't want black bars on the side. So this is just a demonstration. All you got to do is just open up Bandicam or something and measure how big 1080p is on your screen and then just mark that with the screen tool. But I'm going to delete this because we don't need that anymore. I have this thing in the bottom right hand corner of the of the uh, canvas right here and basically this is where my face cam goes in some of my videos and this is what I use to record. Essentially you could choose an infinite amount of pictures and post them wherever you want on this canvas and then for example, if I want to add a face cam video, I'll just go scroll down. You can't see it, but however many face cams you have plugged into your computer, it's going to show up on this list, and you're going to choose whatever one it is. It's going to be a side kind of list right here. Since this one's already covered, I'm going to use this one, and yeah, I'm going to appear here in a couple of seconds. It's really dark and crappy, I know, but um, yeah, this is what it's going to look like. Um, scroll down, and you can just kind of like resize it to whatever you want, and this is really neat because what you can do when you're doing this is... Um, you can add the game in the background, you can just go to the same thing, add, and then game capture, and then you can choose whatever you want, and then just place it in the background, kind of like right here, and then have this overlaid, and put it up on the side or something like that. But let's say you don't want to do that, let's say you're, um, you're watching this, this tutorial because you want to um, figure out the latter option, like what if I want to record games with Skype, and I want to, you know, play games with my friends, but... I also want to just see what I'm doing while I'm recording with my friends. Maybe I'm in like a competition or something. I'm doing a challenge. Or maybe I just want to record myself and put it on Twitter, Instagram, something like that. Um, so you don't really need the face cam. You just need someone else's face cam. Open up Skype or whatever you want. Um, oh, God. Oh, I'm not supposed to show that. Okay. Um, that's private information. Never mind. But yeah, open up Skype. And once Skype is opened, I don't know how else to demonstrate what Skype looks like when it's opened. But... Um, just go into add, screen capture again, and then choose whatever you want. I have the desktop right here. Here's what it looks like. This is the recording. Da 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 da. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, and then choose whatever you want to be recorded because whatever you want to be recorded is going to be recorded in this sort of area right here. And 
Oh yeah, down here, this is this is where the scenes are, right? As you can see, this is a little bit confusing. The scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four. You don't need any of this actually. You just need scene one because this is all you're gonna need to record. Because once you start recording, you're just gonna be recording whatever shows up right here. So if this is covering the whole screen, the only thing that's gonna be showing in the recording is just this screen. That's all that's gonna be recording. It's kind of pointless, but yeah. You could also um, change the layers by scrolling this down a little bit. So if you want your face cam to be in front, you could just scroll this down below the face cam. Um, or if you want this to be in front, you could just scroll this up um, however you want. And as you can see, I have a crap ton of stuff here. Literally so many images and videos. That's what I used to record. Um, the more images you have, depending on your computer speed, it'd probably be more laggy. Um, that's the thing with high quality face cams. It's the only problem with this software. It doesn't really work that good because it sometimes lags the face cam. And you'll have to end up just recording it separately and then putting it on the video. Um, afterwards most likely you don't want to go out and pay 800 bucks for Sony Vegas or however much it costs I don't even freaking understand why you have everything set up, right? That's all you really need to know um, But if you don't previously have your audio set up all you need to do is simply just go to just go down to this settings option right here It's called open audio settings and here it is so you just gotta go to audio and Go to whatever you want um, this won't be default because you just got this um, you most likely got the free version as well, so every single time you open it, you're gonna have to sign into your account unless you have it saved, and you're gonna have to wait like 20 seconds, so that's just a side note, unless you want to pay like 19 bucks a month or something, I don't know. And then you just choose your microphone, and as you can see, I have my microphones right here, I have all these microphones, I use this one to record, and fun flippity flaps. Hotkeys, this is hotkeys to record or change the scene. Like I said, scenes are very, very unnecessary. All you need is one scene, unless you're gonna be using this for like, I don't know, animation or something. I don't know why you would use this for animation. But then go into broadcast. Um, you could also change the broadcast settings. This is what's gonna record. Um, I used to record with Bandicam, just record this area right here. It's very unprofessional, sometimes it doesn't work, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, change the broadcast settings. Um, by clicking on that settings bar, make sure the Kodak is x264, quality very high, or you could do ultra high, it depends. Um, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Very high should be suitable, but you know, if you have a slow computer, then maybe you should just stick with the standard, if you know what I'm saying. And then, I don't know why I can't change this, but you know, if it's if it's grayed out, then most likely means it doesn't want you changing it and messing it up. So, um... Yeah, bit rate. I don't really know what that means, but I keep it on this and it works. So yeah, fun stuff. And mono, you know what? I don't even know. To be honest, I've never even messed with this. But file type, you do do. I just can't speak right now. Literally, every time I turn the recording on, it's like my mind just goes somewhere else. You know? It's honestly kind of frustrating. <laughs> yeah, make sure the files on MP4 and split files at never. You don't want to have a hundred files on your computer every single time there's a 20 seconds intro on your video. So, and then once you have your audio set up, it should look, look like this. You could change the audio, how high, it, how high you want it to be right here by setting this setting here. And then the sound volume range, it doesn't really matter. I guess you can leave it at whatever you want, but I'm gonna leave it at, at about right there. That should be good. And once you have everything all set, by the way, you could just resize this to make it so it's like, I don't know, a little bit better. It depends. Maybe you could get rid of these gray bars. These gray bars won't appear in your video, by the way. It's just this black canvas. Broadcast when you're done. I have this up here. You're not going to have that. That's just if you want to stream to YouTube or Twitch. And then start local recording is going to start the recording. And you could set up some hotkeys. But yeah. And then you could proceed into making your... Minecraft videos while Skyping on Twitter and um, <laughs> whatever you want to do with this. I don't freaking care. That's how you use XSplit Broadcaster. And if you guys think I left out something, make sure you go ahead and leave some suggestions in the comments or ask me some questions. I would be more than helpful to answer you. And um, yeah, make sure you guys leave a like if you did enjoy. Thank you for watching this simple tutorial and I will see everyone, every one of you, in the next video, subscribe for the drugs. The drugs. Goodbye. Bye.